How much do you have left in your savings bank account? You don't need to comment it. Just check your bank account or maybe even have that number in your head. Is this your ideal number at this time? Data continues to come out that more and more Americans are burning through their savings bank accounts just to afford the cost of living. Now, the question is, what happens when that money runs out? Do we just rely on credit cards and build debt? And on the topic of running out, food shortages and the plan of the World Economic Forum may be coming into fruition as the chess pieces that they have prepared are now slowly moving towards their goals. More farmers across the globe are protesting as their way of life and farming continue to be challenged by climate change responses that don't seem to match the way that they normally do things. I'm not sure how we're going to continue to deal with the climate problems that they preach while we all starve to death. Do you think that makes sense? Now, before I continue, please take a second, smash the like button. Definitely helps out with the YouTube algorithm, and I'm for sure going to need it with this video. And if you're in need of your daily dose of the truth when it comes to the state of our economy, social security, SSI, SSDI, global happenings, and everything that's really going on in our housing market, the stock market, and Washington, D.C. that affects our lives, our families, and our bank accounts, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below of this video. Late last year, November to be exact, we were told that consumers, that's you and me, still had around 75% of our health crisis savings. Now, I think they may have mistaken us for those folks that defrauded the federal government of millions to billions of dollars. As far as I remember, none of us received anywhere close to a million dollars in financial aid. But still, guys like JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon continue to say that the consumer's health is in good shape. I guess if you want to call zero as a good shape, since there are many businesses calling for bankruptcy and workers feeling the pain of inflation, layoffs, then yeah, maybe he is right about that. Macro Mavens founder Stephanie Pomboy was quick to argue Jamie Dimon's statement by saying that he was quoted to saying, that we were going to experience an economic hurricane last June, but is now backtracking with his words. She also discussed the mythical savings that some still expect Americans to have, while noting that before the health crisis, our savings were at $1.6 trillion, but today it stands at only $460 billion. As a consumer yourself, do you still have savings from years ago sitting around in your bank account, some unspent stimulus check money that you didn't get around to spending yet? But yeah, let's listen to this false narrative that our wallet are still flush with cash. But at which point do you say to yourself that maybe we're screwed with today's economy? Well, when it's just the start of the year and it's already being compared to the Great Recession. Look at this. Over 103,000 layoffs early this year. The highest since September 2020 and the worst start for job cuts since the Great Recession in 2009. Now, I know that there's a lot of people who are wondering, where's the strength in the labor market that the government continues to tout about, right? Well, I'm looking for the same thing. Andrew Challenger, Senior VP at Challenger Gray and Christmas said this, quote, we're now on the other side of the hiring frenzy of the pandemic years. Companies are preparing for an economic slowdown, cutting workers and slowing hiring, end quote. Now, what's also worrying is that even though inflation is slowly trickling down, some experts are saying that it could literally bounce back up again. Do you guys think that inflation will continue to be difficult to control? Now, we heard a lot of optimism from Fed Chair Jerome Powell with him saying that this could be a deflation period, but experts are saying that this couldn't be any further from the truth. This could very well mean that inflation is simply much higher than we've been told. And we already knew this, but maybe the truth is finally coming out about how high inflation is, or I should say how high inflation really is, maybe around 15% at a minimum, 20%. Now, if this is the case, and again, this is just based on my own personal experience and my expenses, then the 25 basis point hikes that are planned for the future are probably not going to be nearly enough. And don't get me started on the price of food. How many times have you gone to Walmart, Target, Costco? Matter of fact, I just came from Walmart earlier today or wherever you happen to do your food shopping. And you think yourself. I swear that this was cheaper last time, but we had to expect that this was coming, even with the president himself when he warned us. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re re still talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. And uh, because both uh, Russia and Ukraine have been the breadbasket of Europe in terms of wheat, for example, just give one example. While the president announced this, we didn't expect it to happen in an instant. That's just not how it works. It was due to play out over some time, but the problem is now the time has come. And who do we blame for the lack of food? Who else? Putin? Russia? But the Russian president says that it's way too easy to pin the blame on them. 
Это был первый шаг, очень серьезный шаг к развитию неблагоприятной ситуации на продовольственном рынке, потому что прежде всего в, наверх пошли, в гору пошли цены на продовольствие. Это первое. Второе, вторая причина – это недальновидная политика европейских стран, а прежде всего Еврокомиссии в сфере энергетики. Putin claims that the food and energy issues that many people face today around the world, especially in Europe, is not his fault. Это вообще никак не связано ни с какой военной операцией России в Донбассе. Не имеет к этому вообще никакого отношения. Но на следующий шаг, когда началась наша операция, европейские, американцы, американские партнеры так называемые, они начали предпринимать шаги, которые усугубили ситуацию в этом секторе, и в продовольственном, и в секторе производства удобрений. Путин также called into question why food wasn't reaching developing countries, and how more developed countries took advantage of the situation by taking care of themselves first when it came to food. В прежние десятилетия и столетия. Just as many European countries acted in previous centuries as colonialists, this is how they continue acting today. They have once again cheated the developing countries and continue cheating them. It's obvious that this approach will only intensify the scale of the global food crisis to our great regret. This may lead to an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe. With a clean name when it comes to food supply, especially since Russia and Ukraine supply a majority of wheat supply to the entire world. But late last year, this information came out. Now, I'm not saying that Europeans are in a good situation, not by any means. They're also suffering with food and energy over there, but to say that developing countries are getting leftovers from food supplies, that would be an understatement. I mean, which of these leaders weren't aware of the implications that this war is going to have? And the sanctions, of course, right? And to continue to have it going as millions of people continue to starve? It's unbelievable. Poorer nations will suffer greatly as much more developed nations will continue to jump in line when it comes to the food supply that they need. And look, I'm not saying that Putin is the best guy out there, but he did advocate for peace. I can already see those eyes rolling at me. Putin, peace? Give me a break. Well, listen to this. Оборонноспособность начала повышаться. Мы пытались выстроить отношения и с ведущими странами Запада, и с НАТО. Посыл был один. Давайте перестанем быть врагами. Давайте жить дружно. <coughs> Давайте вести диалог, укреплять доверие, а значит и мир. Мы были абсолютно искренними, хочу это подчеркнуть. <coughs> Отчетливо понимали всю сложность подобного сближения, но шли на это. И что же мы получили в ответ? Получили, коротко говоря, по всем практически основным направлениям возможного сотрудничества Yep. Now, why would NATO and the West not want peace? Is war far more profitable? Is it easier to take tax money in this way? Blame it on the war? Hey, your taxes are going up because of the war. Food prices are going up because of the war. Gas prices, war. I mean, I'm just asking you guys. This is the question you have to ask yourselves. And while we fear food shortages could hit our doorsteps at any moment, the World Economic Forum continues to have its way with farmers. Just look at Paris. French farmers are protesting a pesticide ban that threatens their farm production. Jerome Despay, Secretary General of the FNSEA, or France's main farming union, said this, quote, Our means of production keep being undermined by prohibitions without solutions. Enough is enough, end quote. And I gotta ask you guys, when is enough enough? You know what? I may have the perfect idea as to why pesticides are being banned. It's because those insects and critters, they're needed to make burgers, right? I mean, come on, guys. Why are these farmers suddenly being hampered with what they do best? Now, this is more of an observation and just me trying to connect the dots here. But if you mean to change the way that the world works, you need to change it drastically, right? What do you guys make of this? Is all of this happening by chance or was this prepared and planned all along? Now, you might be wondering, how do I protect myself during this time? Well, one way would be to improve your cash flow and fair warning here, you need to work at it. But lucky for you, I'm here to guide you through this. If you're concerned about the strength of the US dollar, there's always investing in gold, which I'm a big fan of actually. And there is a link in the description down below this video for the best way to invest in gold if that's your thing. Now, if you want to talk about budgeting, investing in real estate and the stock market, creating multiple streams of income through side hustles and small businesses, feel free to join us over in the Patreon community. There's a link in the description down below for that. But before I go, please don't forget to drop a thumbs up for the video. Also, subscribe Subscribe for your daily dose of the truth. Appreciate you guys watching. Please be kind to one another and I'll see you on the next one.